Welcome to Teaching Theater, a podcast about the practice and pedagogy of theater education, produced for HowlRound Theater Commons, a free and open platform for theater makers worldwide. I'm your host, playwright and theater professor, Elizabeth Gregory Wilder. Thanks for joining us for Teaching Theater. On this episode, we'll be talking about collaboration with Patrick Lillis and Jen Goff. Jen Goff is the chair of the theater program at Center College in Danville, Kentucky, an actor, director, improviser, dramaturg, scholar, and cat mom. Jen's research focuses on contemporary comic women playwrights, as well as comic and feminist theory more broadly. She earned her BA from the University of Portland, her MA from University of South Carolina, and her PhD from Wayne State University. She is a co-founder of the Distracted Globe Theater Company, as well as Etudes, online journal for emerging scholars in theater. Welcome, Jen. Hi, Elizabeth. And we have Pat. Patrick Lillis, the founding artistic director of The Farm Theater. He's a writer, director, and teacher. He hosts The Farm Theater's podcast, Bullpen Sessions. He's a company member of the Labyrinth Theater Company and a lifelong Yankees fan. Hey, Elizabeth. Well, thanks for having us. Thank you guys so much for being with us today. Uh, when we started this pot project, I knew that we had to do an episode on collaboration because theater is, at its core, a collaborative art. Um, I wanted to start actually with Patrick. You run an organization, um, the Farm Theater, that gives theater departments an opportunity to collaborate with a playwright to create a new play. And, and Jen, you've directed one of these projects. So I wanted to start by um, inviting Patrick to just sort of give us an overview of how that project works, because I think it's a, a really wonderful program that is unique in what it offers theater programs. So could you tell us a little bit about what you guys do? I will. It is the, the Farm Theater. Goal is to cultivate early career artists through workshop productions and mentoring. And our main program is the College Collaboration Project, which in partnership with three colleges, three theater departments, we commission an early career playwright. Uh, we pick the playwright. Everybody has, the playwright has to have a voice that is, has a able to write for young people. And by that, I define 30 years and younger so that undergraduate actors can just actually achieve it. And also they have to have something they want to write and work on for a year because they're going to develop it over that academic year and be in conversation with the students about. And when we started, the first thing, once we picked the playwright and the theme they're interested in writing in, we set up a Zoom before Zoom was cool because it's in its 10th year conversation with students from each of the schools, just so that they can, the playwright can hear how college age students are thinking about the topic they're interested in writing about. And using those dramaturgical resources, they're writing their, the playwright is writing their play. They're not writing for the specific, the specific students that they're talking to, but they're engaging everyone in a conversation about the theme. After that conversation, which takes place usually like February, August, which just happened, we had our three-day workshop of the first draft of the script, bring in professional actors in New York around the table, the schools, faculty, and representatives, some students will come, everyone in the room is participating in the development of the script over three days, and then the playwright, from all that information and mining, may rewrite the three days, but will rewrite from what they learned during that workshop, send the draft to the all the schools, but to the first school that's doing the first production, they will start rehearsal. And the playwright goes to two days in person to work uh, with the students and the, and the faculty on the, in rehearsal process, rewriting, answering questions, asking questions, whatever they need. Then myself and the playwright see the production, what we learn from the production, the playwright rewrites again, go to the second school, the third school. It is modeled after like the National New Play Network's rolling premiere, except for its rolling development. And then at the end of the process, uh, we will in, do a reading in New York that showcases the play and the project and we'll invite actors from each of the productions to come and do their part in the reading next to professional actors. And that's, the, that's how the program works. And one of my goals through when we talk about collaboration is, you know, we're going to grow the script. It's going to get three productions. It's going to have the collaboration, but it's really about growing artists. and 
recognizing how important your voice is and strengthening the voice. One of the things that I love about the program is it, it really is collaboration at its best because you are have you have an opportunity to have a playwright in the room with a director and these students um, who are young actors so everyone has an opportunity to work together so Jen you are a director and a teacher so how do you teach collaboration oh well it's it's sort of fundamental to everything that I try to teach I, even in in history and literature classes, I do collaborative exams um, because I think it's important that theater students just come to tasks with this collaborative mindset. And so an opportunity like this program where we're able to, to see the script as collaborative in a way that students don't always get to see, you know, they scripts are those beautiful finished things that we get in nice bindings and they're, they're unapproachable a lot of the time. And so we get a chance to sort of use a project like this for students to see a script as something that they are directly impacting and that they might even consider themselves capable of doing someday because it's not some unapproachable monolith. It's a, it's something that all the artists are taking part in and all the artists are building together. And I think that's really, really an exciting thing that I've never gotten to do with any other uh, teaching experience. Because certainly we want them all to be in the room together and learning how to tell a story together. And this, uh, this college collaboration project really furthers that experience of collaboration. I also really love that it gives students an opportunity to learn a very specific vocabulary in terms of how to communicate with a writer, how to communicate with a with a director, so that when they go out into the professional world, they have those skills. Because this is the kind of opportunity that most students don't have until they leave college. I want to just talk about that because I we just did the three day workshop and on the second day I was reminded we had 30 people in the room we had 15 students along with faculty and the cast and the playwright and it was great to remind them I said you know we'd love to hear what is interesting to you and also what questions you have because I found young artists wanting to solve it and I'm like you don't have to find the solution first of all we're on day one of a year-long project so your solution is even the playwright solution is not going to be the solution a year from now. So like, let's not spend time there. Just spend, what are your questions? What's the provoking in you? What are you excited about? And also to model the idea of like you, the actor doing their committing to their job of acting it also helps to clarify for the playwright what's working and not working. And, and to, so everybody, but it was interesting just when you said it, it sparked that moment because I was like, right, we're all coming to it and we're happy to hear ideas, but you don't have to find the solution. You just participate in the conversation. So what are some of the challenges that you see students struggle with in the collaborative process? I think one of the big challenges I often experience with my students is the desire to be right. Um, they don't, they, they want to make sure they're getting the right answer and they want to, um, they don't want to take the risks it takes to potentially find something that's more exciting and more engaging. And um, that being open to a collaborative process where you can't necessarily control the outcome is very, very scary when you want the right answer. You know, um, I think students are, we joke a lot about group projects, right? Because group projects are infamously terrible, but theater is a group project no matter what. And so I think getting students out of the sort of fear of vulnerability that comes with working, putting your, the fate of your project into the collective hand is a challenge. I, I like that you said that students want to have the right answer. Um, and, and I think that a lot of students really struggle with that. And of course, as artists, like there's no is no right answer. It's also subjective. And so many students really struggle to like let go of that. Patrick, what do you see when you get in the room with students? 
Well, that's one of them is the, the right, but also that willingness to, the right thing is what I was gonna, is absolutely it, but also willingness not only to be wrong, make mistakes, but to fully be able to look at it from another point of view. You know, because there's a lot of times where you'll hear early on when you're talking about a play and a character, well, I wouldn't do that. And you're like, right, right, right. But let's figure out why this person would do that. You know, because it may not make sense and it may need to be explored. Is this the action and does it make sense in the story? But a lot of times it's getting them to, you want them to bring their life experience to it, but they also, you want them to look at it from like, what if it's another perspective? And when they can do that, and open it up, it becomes very exciting um, because, you know, you love them to bring their own perspective, but you also want them to be, I want them to challenge the room, but also be challenged themselves and allow themselves that. So I find those, but it is, they're being right. And also the, uh, I wouldn't. And it's also like, don't ever, <laughs> I was about to put the negative on, but try to be open to the positive and, the, and, and no limitations. Cause there's always a, uh, you know, we just, again, I said, we came from the three-day workshop and it's so interesting when they're talking about the end of the play and the impact it's going to have on the audience and they want to control that. And you're like, let, let it go and see what the character needs and see what the story is and let it flow. And yeah, and be open, open to possible, as opposed to putting a cap and limitation on something they, I love when Jen said something they can control because they, you know, and, and, and it's exciting through this project, project watching it over the years, that you do watch the play grow and you watch the students recognize how much it grew and how much it grew through their contribution. And then when it's getting done, they're like, oh my God, I didn't know that was possible, you know? And, and I think that's exciting, because but those are the barriers at first. Stepping away from the farm project, specifically, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, devising because so many more people are focusing on devising within their theater programs. Um, how do you think devising has changed the way we approach collaboration? That's such an interesting question. I've, I'm an improviser. I've been an improviser for about 20 years and um, that's one of those things that I think people are terrified of storytelling that they don't know the destination when they get there. Um, it's it can be really terrifying for um, for people to walk in and say we're going to tell a story and we don't know any of the ingredients. And but I also so sometimes find that that ends up making the journey all that more exciting and personal to the creators. Um, it's again sort of democratizing the the process of playwriting that it's not it doesn't just belong to this person in this room with a typewriter who writes all day and then sends us this perfect finished thing. It makes writing belong to everyone and it makes storytelling belong to everyone. And I think that's it's intimidating for sure because we're very used to being told that we're in our silos. You know, I am an actor, I am a designer, I am a director, I am a playwright. And devising asks us all to be all of those things and understand all of those things. And that's where I think that, you know, theater training has to make sure that students understand all the pieces of theater and can speak all those languages because you can't devise, you can't effectively collaborate if you don't know how to speak to everybody else in the room. Those are all great points. Um, you know, one of the things that has come up in some of uh, my our previous conversations has also been sort of who's in charge. You know, it's this collaborative process, but who, but who is in charge in that situation? We are all collaborators. We all have a stake in this, but is there someone actually running the ship? And and different people have had different thoughts on on what the the answer to that is. Um, do you guys have any thoughts on that? I have thoughts on it. Uh, I think it's, uh, I have thoughts on it and it's very serious. I have a hard time thinking, I think that's an important question even when we're devising, like it's a very, 
I, you know, when I think about play development in the workshop we did, and the first time you're working on a playwright's play, I think it's important to have a director, dramaturg facilitating the conversation. So technically they're leading the room, but you're serving the playwright and you're asking the playwright what, you know, you're in conversation with them, like, what do you want to achieve? What do you want to hear? What do you, how do you want to go? Here's ways to go about it, you know, and, and making sure that you're serving them. And it was actually exciting this past three days we did for the first real time that I remember having actors improv a scene and then giving the context and information that we wanted the two characters to have. And that was useful, but it was important to have somebody facilitating the room so that the playwright could, they're serving a play, they're hearing it. And when I, when I think about devising, I love that Jen said it was the thing about everybody understanding the roles and language and conversation. I think it is valuable that there's somebody, somebody, I don't think it has to be the director, you know, quote unquote, but somebody's facilitating it because I think what's really, and somebody else who's paying attention to record it, they're not writing their script, but they're recording the information because one of the things you need to do in any, what I believe is important in any collaboration is to create a safe environment so that people can fully commit to what you're asking them to do, like that improv, so they can make mistakes, so they can try something, and so they don't have to watch themselves or listen to themselves. So you have somebody outside creating that space for the people to go into it, and there's somebody else on the outside saying, oh, that was really when I heard this or I saw that, you know, and then we can talk about it afterwards, but create the environment where you're not self-conscious while you're creating it. So another question I have is, you know, COVID really changed the way we made theater because we couldn't be together in the same way. Have you seen a change in the way students approach collaboration since the pandemic? Has it changed the way they collaborate? Has it changed the way they communicate with one another, with the way they interact with one another? I mean, you know, the short answer is definitely yes. I remember the first day we were we, the first show that we did live back from COVID. We were still rehearsing masks, but we were able to perform without masks. And the first day they took off masks, they couldn't stop staring at each other's mouths because they just weren't used to seeing them. And I do think that you know we talk a lot about the power of screens and sort of the ways in which people pull up, pull away from each other when we're all buried in our little screens. And we had to live in screens for two years. And I do think that that's been a bit of a challenge for some of our students. But I also think that a lot of them have come back from it really hungry to collaborate, to be in a room and to do something real. So they may not necessarily have had you know, the, the, the complete time in high school where they got to do all the school plays and really learn how that works and then keep moving forward. But so they can, they might come in with a fewer hard skills on collaboration, but they want to do it. They really want to, and they know that they've missed out and they want to make it happen, which is exciting. Yeah. They want to be in the, you're right. They want to be in the room, but I, I also want to say one of the things that I, I have to get patience for because I'm old is the thing that the pandemic did I thought was great is finding different forms of communicating. And so like in a rehearsal, you know, before COVID, when we were around the table, you would want everybody to be present and maybe have a notebook or something, but like, and not just technology laptops are up, but people taking notes on their phone or sending a text and realizing they're not distracted because of uh, because of Zooming for so long, they got used to putting something in chat or sending somebody a text about something. And you realize if it's a healthy room, they're sharing ideas different ways. And I thought, oh, that's that came out of this. And I think it's useful, for, it's useful for me to be aware that that's happening and that it's not, you know, not not productive. It's 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 a different way of sharing ideas. And some people are better at you know, writing it in chat and and or that equivalent of whatever that is, then speaking up maybe. And it's really, I found ways for different conversations to happen in a room, which is, 
you know, exciting because I'd like it all to be in a circle and take time and one person at a time speak and but more information gets shared. That's a really good point. I hadn't thought about that. You know, the work that you do at the farm is very specific. It's a very specific process. Jen, what skills did you see your students take away from that experience? Definitely, they they really grow in their ability to analyze and talk critically about story and about character. I've directed two farm shows now, and um, the first one was uh, John Proctor is the villain, and we were the first school to do it. And there, when we first got the script, there were a couple of pages that said things like, something awesome happens, you know? And it was great because that the students really got to see their impact on the script as it went along. And there were scenes that were written after she met our actors. And there were lines that were delivered by, for the very first time by these you know 20-year-old actors who now they look at that script and see themselves in these conversations and see how analyzing something isn't just an exercise in English class, it's very actionable and they can see that their ideas have very real, play out in very real artistic ways. That was really cool. Patrick, what do you see um, students take away from the collaborative process? Um, I see what Jen said is I, I, I make a comment that I think it's miracle grow for students because they recognize, I, I think it's, it, and I'm going to say miracle grow again for them because it is, they see the impact that their artistry has. And when you talk about doing a play that's published and done, and you know, you're getting the tools of acting. When we've had students do everything, students have directed, designed, stage managed, and acted, right? So, but you know, you're sort of solving a problem of this published play and you're learning the tools of acting, right? But then when you realize that artistry is about using those tools for your voice, for you to express something, for you to, and when you bring that and you realize that what Jen said, like in Kimberly, I just talked about her play, there'd be like six lines on a page and then something awesome happens here and, you know, and, or the equivalent. And then you, you realize that how you set a line, what you brought to it, your personal artistry impacted that and that play will be changed forever. You, you watch their confidence just grow because they realize they matter. You know, they're not just learning how to act or trying to be Romeo for the first time or, you know, that's been done for 500 years and do I get it right? They're like, oh, I'm breathing life into something that's never been given life to before. And so I do. I watch them whenever I, like we just met in, you know, we just met around the table in August. And when I see them, the same kids in June, yes, they're a year older, but they're so much more confident in the process all the time. And I find that to be the truth uh, with all the kids who do the collaboration. So we've talked a lot about sort of the actor, playwright, director collaboration. How do you pull in your designers? How did they become part of this process? Yeah, for definitely the designers are a major part of the collaboration. Certainly we usually have at least one faculty designer, if not more, but then also student designers who are a part of it. And so there's the sort of teaching them how to plan ahead the way you need to as a designer while also planning flexibility because it's a new play and we don't know what's going to happen. And um, they are definitely going to be present when the playwright is on campus. They're going to be present, uh, invited in, to and present in rehearsals when they can be because they they need to, I, I don't like when we have we're, we get back to those silos I talked about, you know, this notion that somehow the the designers are separate from the process, that they are building a world alongside everybody else. We're building it together. And so they have to be able to ask questions of the playwright. Um, we had the the second um play that I did as part of the farm um with Dipti Brahmankar, who is part of this who's this year's playwright. Um, she had a lot of really specific music in her script that our student sound designer could not wrap her brain around. 
And they spent so much time together talking about why this song and what does it mean and listen to the lyrics and listen to the beat and oh, what else could fit along that and building this whole sonic world because she was empowered to ask the playwright questions and to bring her own creativity to the process. So really cool. Glad you mentioned it because that was that was the collaboration I was thinking about because the first response, you know, it was also learning how that collaboration happened because at first it was like, we wouldn't listen to that song, right? That that limitation, right? And then when it became asking questions of what is it, what can it be, why is it, why is it? And then it gives you opportunity like, oh, okay, if it's that, then what if it's this, you know? And it was really great and such a simple, I was thinking about that play for some reason, because also the costume design I think was a student and they, the people had to mature over a year, but they, it wasn't about a year's maturing. It was, it's called soft launch because it was the first year out of college and sort of finding your traction at the end of the play, somebody has really taken a large step. And I thought, wow, they all look like they're five, six years older in this simple thing. And it's like, oh, that person understood the journey of the play and they were really engaged in what the, their job was for the end. And I thought, both of those student collaborations were because they were part of the whole and listening throughout and, and being in conversation. So, but it's bringing them in as early as possible. I would like them to be around the table when we're doing the first read for the year because they always start to think like, you know, they start to think about how the story is gonna to be told physically. So how do you think the collaborative process can help us through this moment of crisis that we're in in the American theater. There's a couple of moments. There's a moment of crisis in an absence of audience and there's absence of funding. And then there's also uh, important social change that's happening in theater. And I'm wondering when you say crisis, which one you want me to think about? Because I don't think the cultural change is a crisis. I think that's for the better. Definitely. Let's think about it in terms of the the crisis of our audiences and our funding, because I think that that's the thing that is threatening our livelihood. Talk about one of the goals that for the college collab, right, is when we pick the playwright and I say pick a theme that you're interested in writing about. It's something I think undergraduates will be un interested in having a conversation about. And when we get in the room for the three days, they're having a conversation. Then when you're in rehearsal and designers and the, and then we ask, and Center College is a great partner with this, to reach out to, you know, when we did John Proctor's The Village about the Me Too movement and counseling centers, and they start to have a conversation and it becomes wider. And then of course the audience used to play and the conversation gets wider. And I think what, and, and as it goes from community to community, conversation keeps growing and growing and including more people. And I think it, what we want to remember is we tell the stories of theater because we're sharing ourselves. And if we're fully sharing ourselves with a purpose, we're not only we're not only asking the audience to listen, but we're also listening back. It's a conversation, you know. And as long as we keep engaging them in the conversation and and for a purpose of what we think is important and what i think is important is our humanity not that we're going to the theater to lecture but we're going to examine we're going to like talk about my humanness in this around this theme around this issue around what makes it hard for me what makes it exciting for me and then hearing back from them about what resonates with them and i think if we can that's collaboration you know and and there's and it's a inclusive conversation and i think when we do that and i think right now when we talk about building our audience back i mean i'm happy that that broadway is alive and well but i think one of the ways we're going to have to keep doing it is building an intimate audience and inviting them in for personal experiences when we talked about the pandemic and being in screens people want that connection so as i talk holistically about the conversation it's building it intimately, building it personally, really listening to the audience, knowing that they're valued, their experience with what they saw is important. And then when you're going to funders, it is sharing that, being like, here's why it's important. Here's the conversation I had. And here's the impact I, I heard. And 
donors respond to that. They want a stronger community and they want value. And what's the value is people felt valued and they felt heard and they felt seen. And um, so I think that's the spirit of keeping the collaboration continuing from production to the audience, that that's part of, that that's still collaborative. Yeah, I completely agree with um, Patrick's discussion of the audience as part of the collaboration. We we traditionally have treated the audience as if they are receivers of something, but it's not even a performance until they're there. And so really, so there's the sort of what we're doing for our art is training students to be um, to be people who think about the way that the things that they say interact with and impact the people around them and how they can hear what other people need and value and what matters to them. And I think that that's, that goes beyond their impact on the theatrical crisis as well, that the sort of like global inability to connect with each other, collaboration is at the heart of any solutions to that, that we have to learn how to communicate and listen and be vulnerable and share and that it's a it's a worldview it's a way of making meaning it's not just a way of making art and so that's why i think that collaborative collaboration is necessary jen said made me remind me of what when you said we're making people it's like right and i i think what's valuable about the process of collaboration in the room is if you learn to listen and you learn to understand other perspectives you ruin the value you bring whether those students or any of the artists in the room continue to make theater or not doesn't matter. I mean, what matters is that they understand that they bring value into the world and that the other people in the room bring value to the world. And then they continue to build off of that into whatever direction they go in their life. And I think as, as educators, that's ultimately what we want for our students, right? that they can go out into the world and then they can be good collaborators, whether that's as a theater artist or in any other field that they decide to go into, right? Yeah. yeah. That these skills translate into so many other things. Thanks you guys for being here today. Um, it was lovely to talk to both of you. So great to talk to you. Yeah, this was fun. <laughs> This podcast is produced as a contribution to HowlRound Theatre Commons. You can find more episodes of this show and other HowlRound shows wherever you find podcasts. Be sure to search HowlRound Theatre Commons Podcasts and subscribe to receive new episodes. If you love this podcast, post a rating and write a review on those platforms. This helps other people find us. You can also find a transcript for this episode, along with a lot of other progressive and disruptive content, on HowlRound.com. Have an idea for an exciting podcast, essay, or TV event the theater community needs to hear? Visit HowlRound.com and submit your ideas to this digital commons.